Welcome back to Market Fair Affair and let's keep it going with all the buzzing counters. But before that, let's welcome Forum Chera, um, who's joining us right now to highlight some of the counters that are looking great on the technical front. Hi Forum, a very good afternoon and let's start with your first stock uh, and that is Quest Corp. Because why uh, Forum, what we have seen is a great move in the past six months. The stock has been in strong uptrend. But how do you see the stock right now and what are the targets that you are looking out for? Well, hi, good afternoon and thank you for having me on the show. Uh, well, to begin with on Questcorp, the overall we have seen the trend really very good in the past, I would say three months, the stock has already moved up by nearly 60%. It's like we talk from the levels of around 522, the stock price has already inched up to nearly 840 levels. Uh, however, uh, even at these levels of close to 800, there has been an exceptional increase in volume, which is indicating that there is a lot of buying that is happening even at higher levels. Since the overall trend is after the long term trend being intact, and we have a very good increase in volume and every uh, inch up higher, we are seeing a good technical breakout coming in. So where the stock price is moving above its previous highs, it's just taking very smoothly. So I think the uh, trend will continue with the stock and we can expect some further upside. So one can even consider buying maybe a very small quantity at current levels closer to 800. Adding more, uh, if the stock price has to retrace towards 790, a very strict stop loss so can be placed at around 785 levels and one can even look for a higher target of closer to 808. And that's what Quest Corp. But moving on, let's shift focus uh, to all the defense counters because a lot of the, them are seeing good gains in today's trading session and, and indeed a very positive <laughs> and an important news flow coming in. Uh, as we know that the Defense Acquisition Council has cleared 1.4 lakh crore rupees worth of proposals and uh, that includes new order wins that will be coming in way for tankers and stuff. And a lot of this focus is on the localization stuff as well because what the government has said is that majority of the procurement is to be done from the local companies and there has to be a localization target that has to be met. On the back of this, all of these stocks are seeing good gains, see like of HAL that is also continuing its up move. Even yesterday the stock was seen to be buzzing. Uh, six cents of a percent gain coming in on this one and even garden tree shipbuilders this stock was also seen to be under pressure in the last couple of weeks but now seeing a rebound after yesterday's more than three percent of the gains the stock is continuing again even today two percent uh, gain is what the stock is holding at <clears throat> All right, uh, moving on from the defense pack uh, to NHPC, uh, another counter which is in focus today. It is in focus today on the back of the fact that, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, they are in news today after the firm has said that it has inked a memorandum of understanding or an MOU with the Department of Water Resources, Maharashtra government for the establishment of energy storage systems, pump storage systems along with other renewable energy sources uh, such as solar, wind, uh, hybrid with a total capacity of 7,350 gigawatts. And on the back of that, and which we in focus today, uh, currently it is trading uh, in the red. Uh uh, it's uh, trading with cuts of uh, you know three tenths of a percent flattish, but uh, uh, it is right now trading with cuts of three tenths of a percent. All right then, moving on, uh, let's shift focus to uh, Bajaj Finance then, because as we know that there's a lot of excitement in the street related to Bajaj Housing Finance IPO. But Janay, talk to us about Bajaj Finance. What's the news flow out here? Uh, well, yes, Bajaj Finance will be focused as we have a note by Macquarie who have maintained their underperformance rating with a target price of Rs 6,300. What they believe is that Bajaj Housing Finance IPO, its valuation stands at about 2.6 times of its FY26 uh, price to book value uh, at its upper price band. Now, uh, with this, the ROE will actually drop to about 12% from the current 15% levels as the company is raising fresh money. Uh, McQuarrie believes that other housing finance could also uh, see a possible re-rating if Bajaj Housing Finance gets a premium bumper listing. What they say is the current uh, grey market premium is, uh, is it seems to be around about 56 rupees and in this case if there's a listing of about 50% premium based on sum of parts, Bajaj Finance stock could also see about 5% implied upside potential. On the back of this, on the back of this uh, Bajaj Finance will be in focus. Alright, Bajaj Housing Finance is on, in the focus on the back of that IPO, but uh, Bajaj Housing Finance is aiming uh, to be the HDFC of the future, build massive scale and provide services across the mortgage or business spectrum. Hear out from Sanjeev Bajaj on what that means. 
Mm-hmm. So, Bajaj, when I speak to your peers, they said that we want to become like Bajaj Finance. Mm-hmm. At the press conference, you've said that you want to become like HDFC. Why is that? Well, the question that I was asked is, uh, what do you want to be? When but you everybody up? wants to be like you. Why do you want to be like others? Because you, you are the role model for everybody. Because you have to try to get even better. And that's why my answer was that with a very high respect for what HGFC did in the past multiple decades, is what would be the future HDFC? So not the HDFC of the past, but how should a housing finance company evolve in the coming years? That is what we aspire to be and hopefully build excellence around that. HDFC Limited ultimately got merged with HDFC Bank. So are you saying that that is how you started thinking five years, ten years? Well, we are focused right now on excellence to our customers and to our stakeholders. All right, uh, moving on then, uh, Foreign coming to you. You picked out uh, Indian hotels for us. Uh, tell us, uh, uh, what are you seeing on the charts for this one? You know, if you look at the uh, chart, you know, in the last uh, six months for Indian hotels, it has given uh, 11% odd returns in the last one month, uh, some 7 odd percent. Do you see this moving now? Uh, well, Indian hotels uh, had been actually consolidating technically for, for the past, I would say, more than uh, a month or so. So, uh, if we took a uh, look at the data from June onwards, the, it formed a low closer to 500 or 506 to be precise. And uh, immediately it had moved to closer to around 661 levels. Post that, we have seen a good kind of a retracement or I would say more like a corrective decline. And since then, it has been coiling what we call it in a technical term that it has started consolidating in a very classical or technical pattern of a symmetrical triangle. Uh, we did see a good breakout coming in at the end of uh, last month uh, at uh, closer to a level of around uh, 640, 645. And since then, there has been more of uh, some built up in volume. Uh, which is indicating that there is some bullish momentum that is likely to uh, take place and at the same time it's consolidated well enough for it to start moving up. So overall I'm looking, uh, I am quite bullish on the stock even if we consider from around two to three month time horizon. One can consider buying the stock at current levels or maintain a stick stock loss below the levels of 635 and look for a higher target of closer to 685. Alright, that's the technical take coming in on Indian hotels. We're moving on uh, from the banking space. AU Small Finance Bank is in focus. A very positive news flow coming in where the AU Small Finance Bank has submitted application to the RBI for voluntary transition to Universal Bank. Um, and uh, this change would actually ease the regulatory norms, including lower capital adequacy requirements and reduce priority sector lending obligations as well. As we know that this was something that was in works, there was a uh, circular coming in from RBI itself that now uh, all these small finance bank can transition them to become a universal bank and only AU and Ujjivan small finance bank actually met the eligibility criteria set by RBI back in April and indeed a positive news flow in, uh, in, in that direction and AU small finance bank is also seen <coughs> to be taking the step in, in the same. But uh, on the back of this news flow, the stock is holding on to the gains of close to 2%. All right, that is AU Small Finance Bank, but we'll uh, stay with the financials. Uh, Umesh uh, Revankar, who is the Executive Vice Chairman of Sriram Finance, expects the festive season to aid uh, the consumer vehicle and the passenger vehicle demand. Also adds that the uh, CV lending uh, sales may grow at 12 to 15 percent going ahead. Let's go across and take a look. Typically around Ganesh Chaturthi, people buy new vehicles. So I do expect the demand to come in this month for the commercial vehicle and to some extent in passenger vehicles. And the good auspicious days start with Ganesh Chaturthi and I expect things to improve in this month. Whenever the interest rate comes down uh, wholesale and there is a scope for improving the margin and at least for temporary, the margin uh, will uh, become the bottom line. Uh, but it, it may ultimately get passed on to the customer. So uh, nothing is uh, a permanent I- increase in uh, margin expansion, but it will be a temporary advantage. The resale prices of the vehicles have remained strong and actually improving because uh, the new vehicle prices are high and therefore the used vehicle prices, uh, which are sold four or five years back, is really holding strong. And year on year also, the prices have gone up. So I think the ticket size being high, the growth will be a little higher than the actual uh, transaction or number of sales that's happening. So I think the 
the uh, our expectation is that 12 to 15 percent uh, growth would be there in our commercial vehicle lending space all right uh, that's the word coming in uh, from the management uh, of uh, uh, sriram finance but moving on to um, another counter that is uh, in focus today hul and tata consumers the news that's just come in uh, from sources uh, uh, we pick up that you know hul and tata consumers may hike tea prices on cost pressures now regional tea <coughs> I beg your pardon, uh, retailing companies have already raised their prices. But uh, if you look at the operational updates, HUL has bought 18% less tea on a year on year basis via auctions during April to August months. And uh, uh, HUL uh, tea procurement cost has gone up 18% on a year on year basis between April to August. Tata consumers, uh, however, the tea procurement is down 70% on a year on year basis between April to the month of August. But uh, if uh, you know, uh, HUL officials uh, are to be believed, they're saying that they're seeing inflation and tea procurement costs, they continue to monitor the pricing of cross product portfolio they will maintain competitive pricing across products and they will continue to invest on branding in the tea segment and on the back of this news flow uh, hul is trading with gains of more than one and a half percent right now tata consumer is rather flattish it is trading with cuts of minor uh, three tenths of a percent all right that's why both of these companies are in focus in the news flow related to that but with this viewers it's time to slip into a very short break don't go anywhere we'll be right back Welcome back, you're tuning to Market Fatafat with me, Ankita Saksena and with me, Shrifti Sharma, where I take you through all the stocks that are in focus today. But before we get started, before we resume that, uh, let's go across to the management of Star Health. Star Health is evaluating more price hikes in one or two products. Uh, that's the word coming in from the MD and CEO Anand Roy in an exclusive interaction with ET Now's and Raksha. He also adds that they are also looking at new segments, pure protection term in life insurance and motor insurance in non-life are the potential for us. Let's go across and take a look at what he had to say. We have taken a price hike in one product, which is the Youngstar uh, insurance plan. Uh, and uh, as far as the other products are concerned, we are evaluating a couple of them, but we have not taken any decision right now. During your result call, they were yeah. saying that on an average there can be a 10% hike going ahead. Yeah. Yes, Anurag. So we are looking at those two, three products, uh, but we have not taken a decision right now. During the results call, we mentioned that you know we probably will be taking in two other products uh, on the price uh, revision. We are evaluating right now. The quantum would be around 10%. Yes, yes. Quantum would be around 10 to 15% maximum. And sir, uh, you have, uh, there are some reports that if a composite license comes in uh, in the winter session, then you will uh, try to get into non-life segment also. So what would be your preferred areas you would like to venture in? Composite license is uh, something which is uh, due for a few years now, and we believe that uh, it is going to happen uh, probably sometime soon. But whenever it happens, uh, we want to make sure that Star Health Insurance is prepared for that uh, new, you know, regime. Third area, it will be power protection, motor. <laughs> Anurag, I would not like to comment, but yes, uh, logically, pure protection plans of life would be uh, the go-to area for us because that's uh, very, very typical of what we already do uh, and very close adjacency. And similarly, in the non-life segment also, we would evaluate motor as a segment. Uh, we believe that, you know, being one of the largest retail segment, uh, there is an opportunity for us. So in uh, retail, uh, you have just shown the presentation, you have uh, around 93% of your book is retail. So this year, how much uh, premium growth you are targeting? Um, um, because already we are in month of September. Yeah. And uh, for, on the combined ratio, what is your target? This year, we are planning to do 18,000 crores of premium as compared to 15,000 crores last year, which will be around 18% odd growth. Most of it, uh, as you know, we are a large retail play, so it will be uh, retail driven. Retail will continue to be around 85 to 90% of our uh, portfolio. All right, then uh, that was the management of Star Health indicating a price hike in a couple of their products in the times ahead as well as also looking to foray into different uh, segments as well. So all eyes on that. But uh, let's also shift focus back to all the buzzing stocks then. And ABB India is the next counter that has a news flow out here. 
where the company has said that they have launched innovative wireless home automation solutions. Now, ABB Free at the Rate Home expands smart home capabilities, increasing comfort and convenience, as well as they are also seen to be optimizing energy consumption. Homeowners and occupants can help reduce their carbon footprint. Print. Now, it allows users to integrate and control additional elements such as white good appliances, third party devices, as well as EV chargers through a single interference. And on the back of this news flow, the stock is in focus. All right, moving on. Now, forum, you picked out Biocon for us. Now, this counter is trading towards its, uh, it's actually trading, uh, hovering around its 52 week high. So, tell us, is there more steam uh, left for this one? Yes, absolutely. There seems to be more steam in the stock. When we talk about it a bit uh, from March onwards, the lows were closer to 244 levels and the stock price has seen a very good rally. It had gone up to closer to 373 uh, in the month of July. After that, we saw a bit of a retracement of closer to 38.2% retracement as per the Fibonacci levels. Took good support, consolidated well and now is showing signs of resumption of an uphold. Most importantly, it's today breaking out from its resistance level also, as you rightly said, it's marking a 52-week high, which also indicates that there is a lot of steam in the stock. As far as we talk about the volumes, there are good increase in volumes today along with the breakout, which also confirms that there is some buying happening. And as far as an indicator like RSI is concerned, is also indicating a positive divergence, which is supporting this entire bullish move. Thus, I would recommend a buy on this uh, stock at levels of closer to 370. Uh, actually, I was looking at a lower level of around 365, but it's already picked up a lot of momentum. So, one can even look at buying a partial quantity right now and look for a lower level to add in. And maintain a strict stop loss at the levels of 345 and look for a higher target of closer to around 395 to around 398. All right, uh, that's about um, Biocon, but let's shift focus to GSPL now. In Jinnah, it's the third straight day while we are discussing this stock. And after the sort of a restructuring that has been done, the brokerages are not stopping coming out with the target price hike as well as upgrades. Tell us the latest report on GSPL. Well, yes, so Morgan Stanley has upgraded uh, GSPL. They have upgraded uh, to equal weight rating and they have hiked the target price to rupees 452. What they believe is that after removing the hold code discount, move rating and price target are now in line with the uh, Gujarat gas as the restructuring will be is expected uh, to complete by August 25. Also, they have lowered the EPS uh, by 48% and 59% to factor in the PNG RPB. A tariff cut which will be announced uh, which was announced uh, earlier this year on the back of this gspl will be in focus also note uh, currently the stock is trading down by two percent but has already given uh, returns of about 30 percent in last seven sessions itself all right moving on forum you picked out jindal saw for us another counter which is uh, hovering around its 52 week high what is the upside you see on this one uh, exactly, today it's marking, uh, it's done well. It uh, marked yesterday, I would say, like a 52 week high, and today was its trading almost at the same levels. Uh, one is that the stock has done well in the past two to three months, consistently forming higher tops and higher bottoms. So, technically, it is in an uptrend. Uh, in fact, it took a, a support at a 100 day moving average when it formed a bottom at these levels of closer to 560 in June. And since then, it has been very gradually, consistently moving up. So, if you look at it, it's a not maybe it could be one of the favorable stocks for the investors. Now, since the stock has already marked a 52 week high, broken up from its previous highs as well. And the most important part are the volumes, which are exceptional from the past couple of trading sessions, is indicating that there is some kind of an accumulation that is happening at higher levels. So, thus, I would say though overall the stock has seen uh, a good move. Uh, in fact, uh, in the mark from the past two to three months, it's already gained nearly 60 odd percent. And from here on, also, one can look for some higher targets. So even if one is holding on, can ride on to it. If somebody is looking for a fresh buy, can consider the levels of 800 to buy the stock and maintain a very strict stop loss at around 785 and can look for a higher target of closer to 875. All right. Um... Moving on then, and from Jindal Saw, ONGC is another counter. In fact, all the oil marketing companies, oil manufacturing co uh, yes. producing companies are in focus today. But another piece of news that's coming on ONGC is that it is considering setting up a multi-billion dollar refinery and petrochemical project in the nation's most popular state to bolster its business. 
as fuel demand uh, expands. Uh, on the back of that, uh, it is in focus today. But as you can see, ONGC is knocked down almost three percent in trade, and no uh, no prizes for guessing why because of course uh, the oil um, Brent crude uh, and oil prices being uh, under pressure globally. So that's the word coming in for ONGC. All right, that's why the stock is in focus. But let's talk about the pharma space then, because the select counters are definitely um, uh, in uh, pink of health. And once its stock is to win, pharma one-way upside move coming in on this forum. But tell us how we're looking at the stock place technically. Oh, well, we've seen a lot of pharma stocks doing so well. Even the Nifty Pharma Index has been picked up a lot of momentum in the past couple of trading sessions. So, in fact, if we talk about the trend since June, uh, Suvin Pharma has done well. From the lows of 598 to closer to 1070, uh, that is last month, it has already gained nearly 78%. It saw a bit of a decline later on, but it was more of a consolidation. It was just kind of building up because the volume was consistently seeing a rise. So overall, we did see a good accumulation during the consolidation phase in the last month. And now again, the stock has picked up a lot of steam and we can see that the stock price is breaking out today. In fact, the stock is already up by 3%. The uh, day before yesterday, it made an attempt, but it lost out from its highs, which was indicating that it might take some more time. But with today's kind of gains that we are seeing in the stock and as well as the volume, indicates it's again resume moving up higher. Thus, one can even consider buying the stock at current levels of around 1125. Just maintain a very strict stop loss at below the levels of 1045 and can look for a higher target of closer to 1275. All right, uh, with that we have come to an end of the show. In fact, we have wrapped up all the stocks that we had uh, for you that are buzzing away in trade. Uh, it's a goodbye from Shrishti, I and the entire show and the entire team that has put the show together. And with that, our techies, Nagraj, Forum, uh, Jinnet, thank you so much for joining us and thank you viewers for tuning in.